All right, if you had a CRT in a box like this, would you be a little concerned? Should you be a little concerned? Nice smiley face. Would have been nice to have a little bit more effort put in the packing and not reusing a darn Amazon Prime box to ship a CRT. Ugh. Hey everybody, welcome back today. I am doing an unboxing of a relevant piece of retro tech. And as you can tell, I'm not very <laughs> happy with the box that was being used for this. What I've got here today is a CRT, it's a JVC. And obviously it's a small one because it's in a small box. It is a, considered a professional monitor, but it does uh, resemble more of a smaller portable television set. So let's just open it and see. I'll tell you a little bit about this listing. This is a model that generally is listed for about $120. And uh, especially for one that's in decent shape, tested, working. Now this one was listed for, I believe, $70, $75 plus shipping. And I went back and forth, made some offers, wound up actually getting it for $67 after I paid all my taxes and my shipping, and here we've got some air stuff, which is just about worthless with a flimsy old Amazon box. So just show you what I've got in here. I'm just guessing this is the CRT right here. It is, it's, good. it's just sitting in here in about one roll of amazing bubble wrap. So let's hope that it's not busted. And this is our AC adapter for this unit. It was tested, and that is literally nothing. Oh, I've already got a knob falling off the side. So let's see if anything else has been damaged here. But again, I got it. Um, it was tested. It was, you know, the reason I bought it is it was clean. But yeah, it was packaged so poorly that the bezel is broken now. The side is cracked. I mean, I'm, I'm not very happy. I, I'm going to have to obviously re file with eBay, but you can see what's happened here is it was packaged so poorly, the bezel is now separated uh, up here, and uh, the knob has popped off, the whole shell has popped out, and oh, so... I mean, this is this is what this is this is complete garbage packing. And no, this kind of terrible packing job, of course, will not be covered by this guy's any insurance. This guy has now. See, that's the good thing about ordering on eBay is this guy's screwed because I'm going to basically not accept anything if this unless I pop all this back together and it works and there's absolutely no damage because there's a chance that maybe nothing is damaged, but. Um, it's just, ugh, it's infuriating to see that kind of level of packing, especially after I, you know, negotiated with the guy. So anyway, uh, this is what I was hoping to show you. This is a CX60US DC 12 volt from January of 1985. It does run off DC 12 volt, but it does have an AC adapter that you saw. It has uh, selections up on the top for audio and video, out and in, and earphones piece. And then it's got a tuning tuner on the side. The power button does appear to be working. So it also has a great, one of the things I really like about it is it's got that cool little kick up stand. It's got an antenna. It's in pretty good shape other than what's happened to it. So uh, before I get too much further and actually invest time in, in possibly trying to save this thing, I, I'm going to... Um, have to test it out here. So let's let's hook this power battery thingy on the back here. And then we have to plug this 12 volt DC right there. And that's just our quick release switch there. So that's, oh man. I mean, I was really hoping to have a mint condition one of these to show and, and kind of work on. So, um, let's just hope that we get lucky and, and we'll 
we'll be able to save it. Otherwise, this is this is going down to uh, probably be re re have to be returned. I'd imagine if the guy thinks that uh, it's actually still worth something if it does work. So let's go ahead now. Let's let's try to power it up and see if we get a display. Well, we're about to do a test here and see if it even works. We do have the main power switch in the back here flipped up. And AFC is on, which I'm hoping is like the converter. And then I've got a power button on the front. Now I'll have the PC graphics turned on. Our volume button is here. Just look at that damage. It's really unfortunate. I mean, just stupid, stupid damage. So before I even mess with the shell and try to fix that in the button, I want to see if it even powers on. So let's see if it works. You can hear it. Got a hold issue. None of these buttons are pressing or working anymore. Is there a V hold adjuster on it somewhere? There it is. Okay. Now there is color. There we go. Well, it does work. We even got volume. So thank goodness for that. Since it works, we're going to try to fix this damage. So we're going to have to pop the shell off and see if we can get it realigned and the bezel realigned also. Since, you know, it's working, we'll try that. And it um, looks like in the back, all there are are a couple of screws holding it in, just some Phillips head screws. So we'll set up, take the shell off, and hopefully there's nothing really scary inside of here. All right, guys, I had to bring it inside today because it is 95 degrees in Tennessee. And again, we're looking at like 90% humidity, so it's miserable outside. But thankfully, I was able to just get this top shell off and out of the way. It's only got a Armano speaker here connected in this header on the board. So we can disconnect that and get that out of the way a little bit and look at our actual CRT build out here. And this is pretty sweet. So thankfully, it looks like our... CRT has survived uh, without any real flaws or damage so I was concerned that maybe these brackets holding you know the chassis or the uh, tube frame to the actual bezel would be damaged but that's not the case so thankfully all that looks like we can just pop it back into place on the shell and it should fit in here nicely. We do have a couple controls. This is our volume potentiometer right here. These are our two selectors for basically um, RF or video and then the two different styles of RF that you can select between it's really irrelevant at this point input and outputs on our composite and mono audio a stereo or a little audio jack here it's probably mono too for just a headphones input and then if we look at the CRT again a mid 80s Matsushita CRT tube beautiful shape considering its age there's the yoke nice convergence rings very nice for such a small tube there's a flyback assembly over here and then we've got our neck board with probably all our color drive controls on there if I had to guess and um, then our potentiometers on the side that help us actually control some screen effects down here like brightness picture tint vertical hold there's smaller potentiometers under them, which maybe further adjust those. I'm not quite certain. And lots of capacitors. None of them look to be too bad. There are a couple of potentiometers down here that could lead to other adjustments. For example, these two. I don't know whether those are geometry. Could be. I think we're just going to be limited to kind of whatever the yoke settings have here for this. Oh, wait. Hang on. Yeah, 
There's some more controls over here. See those potentiometers right there? Those control something, so we'll figure out what exactly that adjusts also. But the capacitors in here are old. But they don't appear to be in really bad shape. And this is actually quite clean inside for the age. Let's see if we can't get it put back together and looking somewhat normal. All right. Well, thankfully, we've got it back to looking pretty pretty close to good. I mean, it's I got the tuning knob back on here. All that popped out plastic is back in place. And I don't know, there might be a slight amount of damage right here. But I can't hardly tell or notice. I don't know that I'm going to make a fuss about it on eBay. So what we're going to do is we'll need to do some work on this one because you can tell how it's got a little bit of a drooping screen picture at the top and the bottom's the same way so it's got a geometry issue where we'll need to see how it's kind of pin cushioned in or out however you want to say that it's out i guess and so it's kind of u-shaped if i go back here to the main menu you kind of see it a little bit easier see how we've got the curve at the top and the bottom so it definitely needs a little bit of geometry work but it seems to be working great so I'm really excited to be able to add this to, col to the collection. And uh, what do you guys think of this little thing? It's ACDC color TV monitor from the mid 80s. Looks pretty sweet. And uh, so just look for this to come later this year. We'll tear this thing down and man, we'll have to adjust the yoke some because there's no official potentiometers on there. But oh, one more cool little feature is this antenna input back here for the antenna signal and it's got a little internal antenna plug that you can pull out and then move out of the way and then you could add an RF signal in here or if you needed the antenna for back in the day when they actually had RF signals over the air then you could use the onboard antenna like that so it's pretty neat for something almost as old as I am but what do you guys think of the TV? Let me know in the comments. Do you like it? Do you think it's hideous? Am I crazy for buying it? Anyway, I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.